Hi everyone, Scott with CypressGrab.org and in this video I'm going to take you through the physical configuration of a uh, terminal server. And we're going to be talking about Cisco devices for say your Cisco lab and uh, just basically show you how this device here is going to connect from with that console cable go into your computer and it's going to be able to this one is going to be able to connect and control all of these other devices. So a uh, quick aside for, uh, let's say you're studying for a CCNA or, or things like that, and you're looking at a little lab, this might seem a little intimidating, but the thing is, keep your equipment. I mean, most of the time, these, the, you know, you might have a relatively a little bit older uh, Cisco stuff. None of this stuff is brand new. This is all relatively, uh, relatively cheap and relatively a little bit old, but, uh, you know, keep it, and it's going to mount up. And when you have enough devices like that, you might be talking about uh, creating a terminal server so you can actually work on it, but without having to like move this console cable over a million times or have to buy a bunch of console cables. So uh, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about here, is uh, just what we're looking at, uh, how these octals are going to be going to these uh, ports here, or the uh, console ports and the switches in the back. and. Uh, you know why that might be useful for you. So let's take a quick look at the uh, logical configuration. Pretty straightforward but just to kind of reiterate all these things here this is the master that's where you saw those octals coming from. When I'm talking about the octals I'm talking about those massive cables on the on the left side. Let me uh, let's bring it up. These things these are octal cables. All right, Octal there's eight meaning that these are connecting to eight console ports. Right, you see here, one, two, three, da, 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 and then I got a couple left over. So I got some room for expansion. These are octal cables. They're pretty cool. So what you got is you got your octal cables coming from here, going to the console ports of these guys all here. Meaning that like, if you have a uh, massive location like this one here, you can control all of these things via the console port from your one controller router there and in my situation well, let's get that out of the way my situation this is this one right here why did I choose that because it has the most gigs of RAM or megs of RAM I guess but uh, it's the most robust router that I have right here so that's why I just put it in uh, you know you can see right there that is without a uh, that's what I was plugging it into and uh, it's a 2620 XM and then I bought this uh, asynchronous module. So let me show you that real quick. Right here. So these are the things that I bought. I bought it from eBay. I pretty much buy every, all my stuff from eBay just because it's the most convenient and you get the best price. So you see here 32 uh, port asynchronous module. That's kind of what I, I got mine for about, I don't know if it was 40 or 50 bucks, but I mean, pretty much in the ballpark here. And uh, you don't have to get a 32 slot module. Those probably cost more. But I mean, look at this one. This is 16, and you get uh, 60 bucks. So that's what's the beauty of eBay, is you can, like, 125. Who are you going to pay that when you're going to pay 37 bucks in free shipping? So uh, just be aware, this is kind of where I got it from. Basically, all I did is I just bought it and stick it in the slot. And then it shows up. You turn on the router, it shows up. So we'll talk about that in a future video about uh, the the you know show running config and show line and all that stuff. But basically, you if you have Cisco routers, which if you're working in a CCNA lab or had one previously, you probably do have leftover routers. Just buy a you buy the module. You don't have to buy the whole thing. And uh, so after that, you get your oct octal cables here. And uh, let's just kind of just go through a couple more pictures. So yeah, here you start 0 to 7, 8 to 15, 16, 23, 24 to 31, 32, everything starts at 0. Not very surprising, uh, but it just works. So that's kind of all you do. It's, there's, I mean, there's slides in there when you, when you uh, just insert it. It's not really, you don't have to like try to meet the, uh, the back. You know, over here, you don't, it, it, it's all, it's really plug and play. I mean, much more than I thought it would be. Just another quick thing there. 
And then I got just a couple other things of the lab. But I think probably this is the best picture here. So one thing is uh, octo cables after this. Now these can be a little bit tricky because if you go into eBay you'll find things for 50 bucks or this or that. My experience with octo cables is to just go to mono price and get a six foot cable for like 20 and change and you'll get uh, you'll get your eight uh, you know eight console ports and your octo cable. These work for me 100%. I mean I haven't used this like every day I have other things to do but I mean it works well and six feet just be aware like some of these I, I didn't look too much but some of them are like three feet and the thing is if you have your octal cable here you start and you only have three feet well some of these uh, console ports are on this side here like on the switch I believe or maybe it's the layer three here but the thing is you're gonna have trouble if you even get there so I would actually even if you have a small lab like this just get a get a six foot and just uh, velcro it up like I did so uh, that's that and really that's kind of all we're talking about I mean we're just talking about like basically a massive console on this one going out with the octopus going out to these other ones and that's kind of what you see here these are your massive consoles and if you even take a look here, let's thread it. There we go. We got three left, or however many we do. Take a look up. Console connection. This is the uh, console cable connection. If you take a look where I'm controlling all of these from my computer. But console connection, console connection, console connection, console connection. If I had a picture of the back, you'd see the same thing on the back. So, uh you know as a terminal server or even they call it as a console server uh, it's it's uh, very helpful it's pretty cool and uh, I mean I think this is uh, pretty good stuff like uh, post CCNA this is things that for, let me just tell you a quick story before I leave when I was uh, doing my uh, CCNA uh, studying I took some CCNA classes uh, Cisco classes at a uh, community college and they were telling us, well, we have to connect, but you have to connect to this uh, this IP and this port, right? Well, the thing is, they never told us why. Well, well, you have to connect to this port and this uh, IP. Well, maybe it was too far advanced, but the thing is, the reason why they were doing it is because they were using exactly what we're looking at here. So if you're uh, if you're already in like a Cisco class, maybe this is relevant to you. Maybe you see like, oh well, this is on this, you know, this. Uh, this uh, loopback port and it's uh, this specific port so uh, I thought that was pretty interesting where because after you learn so much you're thinking well how the hell am I even connecting to this because it's how's that working well this is how it's working it's console server terminal server whatever you want to call it this is how it works so uh, in the next video I'll talk about the you know the show running config and all the, the logical configuration of it and how to get that set up but basically what you got here physical configuration and uh, I'll uh, see you in the future videos about this